total gut. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Dennis at Digun Luyu. We'll begin this week again with matters of security and as scheduled in the week, the Senate engaged the military top brass as well as heads of security agencies in continued efforts to proffer solutions to the security challenges in the country. The Senate had restricted its plenary to only Tuesdays and Wednesdays as part of its COVID-19 precautions. But the need for an urgent and constructive dialogue involving the legislators and heads of security agencies on Nigeria's security situation brought about the adjustment in timetable. Shortly after it reconvened for the special session, leader of the Senate, Yahya Abdullahi, moved a motion to usher in their guests. The chief of defense staff, service chiefs, directors general of the Department of State Service, National Intelligence Agency, Defense Intelligence Agency and Inspector General of Police. The session dissolved into a closed door with senators optimistic of a silver lining at the end of the engagement. Because we know that we are doing we are best with what you have at hand. But I want to assure you and everyone that the challenges we face are taken extremely seriously by the parliament. Hardly a day passes without this Senate discussing one security incident or the other. Four hours later, the executive session ends and President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, listed the areas no, discussed the during the meeting. On their plans of containing the present insecurity situation in the country, Thereafter, they answered questions from the Sungu senators bordering on security, insurgency, terrorism, kidnapping, and other topical national security matters. Senate has adjourned to Tuesday, the 18th of May, 2021, for Salah break. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Senate Committee on Army also had an interactive session with security personnel and the Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, on funds being made available to the military, especially the Army, given the current security situation across the country. Coming together here in this meeting with the representatives of the Chief of Defense Staff and Chief of Army Staff is with the aim of achieving a secure future for the country. The information put together by the Federal Minister of Finance explained the status of various budgetary releases to the Nigerian Army. And when you look at the details, you find that the request is made to the Ministry of Defense by the Defense uh, Headquarters, and they detail out how each of these uh, uh, funds is going to be used. So it's initiated by the Ministry by the defense, it goes to the president, he approves, we release what is based on what is approved. We don't have any view of the actual utilization of this. What we are doing is releasing the funds. The meeting went into a closed-door session after which the media was briefed. We have agreed to work together so that when the supplementary budget comes before uh, the National Assembly, it will not be a strange document. The security forces 
are all out to ensure that uh, we are protected. I know they are overstretched. I know uh, they don't have enough equipment. They don't have enough, you know, intelligence gathering. Uh, and all this is due to lack of funding. And uh, the briefing we had yesterday in the Senate uh, has made it very clear to us that we don't have a choice. We just have to increase you know, the funds going into the, our, our armed forces and the police. Uh, if we don't do that, we won't get the service we require. We won't be able to secure this country. And uh, security is a collective responsibility. Uh, citizens have a role to play. Local governments have a role to play. State governments have a role to play. And federal government has all, also a role to play since they control the instrument of coercion. They control the police, the army, the SSS. But uh, everybody has a role to play in ensuring that Nigeria is secured uh, from uh, individual level to the community level to the local government level, the state level, and up to the national level. Yeah, I think I believe that, uh, you know, Nigerians supporting them uh, will aid a lot in terms of their men of integrity, uh, credible people, especially. Uh, I know the, the chief of defense staff very well, and the inspector general of police, who was one time a commissioner of data state, who brought peace in data and addressed the issues of security. I believe those experience from commissioner to AIG, and from Deputy Inspector General of Police, not Inspector General of Police. I think he has all the experience. He's well equipped to deal with issues. All, Niger all they need is for Nigerians to give them the necessary cooperation. And I'm calling on leaders, you know, not to increase uh, that kind of divisions, but try to promote peace, love with one another. I think that's the only thing that can bring peace to this country. And even my colleagues, to deal with issues of governance effectively most especially issues of devolution of powers to state, uh, creation of state police and community policing. Once you have community policing, you know that each of the communities are secured. And not only secured, the local government is secure and the state is secure. And at the end of the day, he built a strong defense for the nation. I think this challenging time creates more time, opportunity uh, for people like us who are bridge builders, we are nation builders to rise up to the occasion to address those issues that continue to divide us since 1960. You know that Nigeria has been going through terrible insecurity challenges, challenges of security, as it were. And uh, it got to a point where Nigerians felt that the service chiefs had overstayed their welcome. Maybe if we inject new blood into the system, uh, things will get better. That was the understanding. And it is on those sentiments that the new IGP and other service chiefs uh, have been swept into office. Okay, so everybody's basic expectation is that things should change for the better. Because if nothing changes, Oh, now, people will say that, well, maybe the old ones will say, well, okay, we were not the problem. It wasn't us. The, the issue was uh, beyond us or something. And so, since I always say that, I quote the, the Constitution, it's not my saying. Section 12, subsection 2B of the Constitution says that the security and welfare of the people is the basic reason why government exists. And so, and when we're talking about security, it rests on the shoulders of the security chiefs. They are the ones one who advise the president. They are the ones who ensure that everything goes smoothly. So if things don't go smoothly, they'll be held responsible. And so the basic expectation of people like me, and I'm sure the generality of Nigerian public, is that the new IGP should fashion out ways, fashion out ways, that will ensure that the security situation in the country is better than what we have now. Because come to think of it, things are really bad. If I say things are bad, I'm, too, I'm putting it mildly. I don't have stronger ways to put it. So that is why if you, go, if you come to the National Assembly, whether the House of Representatives or the Senate where I belong, every week there is at least one motion. In, in some instances, uh, several motions 
bordering on insecurity in the country, in one part of the country or, or, or the other. And so, uh, as representatives of the people, we always reflect that in what we do on the floor of the house. So far, there is no change. If anything, things are getting worse. And so I implore the uh, new uh, Inspector General of Police, together with his colleagues in the other uh, security agencies, to map out strategies. Hold a security summit amongst themselves, maybe, and come up with strategies. You see, when members of the public are not involved in security, there's not much you can do. But as things are, members of the public may not be forthcoming with information because sometimes when you come up with information that will help fight insecurity your your position is compromised and these bandits can come after your life and so people are not even keen to volunteer information and you know without volunteering information the police or security agencies will be in a difficult position to because these these bandits are not spirits they operate in communities and if the communities give them up, the security agencies will have little difficulty. But when there's no trust, and when it seems that some of the information that are given uh, compromise the owners or the givers of such information, you know that can create distrust between the security agencies and the members of the general public. So that is what I see happening here. So they will have to build the trust. The Inspector General will have to fashion up ways to build the trust between the police and members of the community, members of the public. So, same for the other security agencies, because as it is now, that is the problem that we have. A, a while back, there was a motion on the insecurity in, in, in amongst the, the on, on campuses. And we never knew that things would get worse. Just the other day, last week, uh, three students from Benway, my home state of Benway, uh, you know, University of, of Agriculture were abducted. You can say that for other places, the case in Cardona is another one uh, example, and, and many other places that we've been talking about. So it means that we now have to target, since these people, most, some of them are, appear to be against Western education. It appears to be their philosophy that we are against Western education. It means that we have to uh, come up with ways to protect our kids in institutions of learning, not just in high institutions. You know, now they have gone to high institutions. Before it used to be secondary school, you know, they were abducting students uh, here and there. So we really have to find ways to protect, uh, you know, these institutions so that these bandits will be put at bay because it's, it's a sad day for our country when you hear that Students who are, have done no, nothing wrong other than to try to find uh, some education, decent edu education, so that they will be of value to themselves and the society. I've been abducted, some are killed. Those from Kaduna, several of them were killed. You know, so it, it's really a sad day. So I think that is the challenge again. Just like I said in your last question, that is another challenge for the new Inspector General of Police and the other service chiefs to ensure. Because even though primarily, it is not the duty of the army to, for internal security. They have to protect us against external aggression. But the situation that we have found ourselves, it looks like the internal insecurity is far more worse than any external aggression that we are facing presently. So they have to look inwards now to ensure that they protect us. And one of the ways is to ensure, since these people are targeting uh, institutions of learning, to ensure fashion out ways that will protect our kids who are, who, are, who are learning now. We can, already Nigeria has a record in Africa at least, with the highest number of kids who are not going to school. Over 10 million, about 12. We are number one when it comes to the number. And so now with what is happening now, it means that most students will be scared of going to, going to school. And you can, you can only imagine what, what that means, pertains for our future. It's, it's really a sad situation. As you'll observe, this has not, has not started today. It started so many years back. And, um, you know, it, 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 it's been growing. And for me, uh, the reason why I believe it might be growing is because there is lack of communication, or proper communication between the citizens of this country and the governance. The governors at all levels, federal, state, and local governments. Um, 
the state governments, particularly, you know, who are the chief security officers of their states, you know, ought to have communicated effectively with the citizens of each state, and then the local governments who are the grassroots, because all these things are happening at the local. It is not happening at the <coughs> at the high, you know, uh, level, except probably when you look at, you know, the institutions that have been attacked. But the found the foundation or the fundamentals where these things are happening is at the grassroots. And the citizens are at the grassroots. And the citizens must communicate very, very well with government at all levels. So in my own opinion, I think, you know, once we can have, you know, a close rapport, you know, in terms of, you know, consultation, in terms of, you know, cooperation, you know, which, you know, I've been, I've been saying that we need to have a federal consultative, you know, uh, relationship with uh, the state governments and the local governments and also, you know, a, a cooperative federalism because all these things are tied together. You know, uh, no government, I repeat, no government on its own can solve the problem of insecurity in Nigeria without full participation of the citizens of this country. What do you think about community uh, police? Well, community police are supported, but I don't support, you know, state police. Uh, they are two different things altogether. Uh, so community policing, you know, is something that we should encourage because, I, I mean, implicit in what has been happening in the past, you know, there was community policy, you know, where the traditional rulers, you know, have been given, you know, role to play in terms of, you know, organizing, you know, uh, 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 providing, you know, security, you know, at their own community levels. But, you know, uh, uh, recently, you know, recent events have shown that, you know, the traditional rulers are not given any role to play in terms of providing security in their own communities. So these are also, you know, issues, like I said, you know, uh, the participation of the citizenry in this country. Um, so uh, everybody has responsibility to make sure that he or she participate effectively in the provision of security in this country through information dissemination, uh, provision, you know, uh, of intelligence, you know, and then, you know, coming together with the security, you know, our organization, with the security outfits, and then, you know, uh, build in the uh, security architecture to make sure that, you know, people, you know, are highly, you know, coordinated you know, uh, to make sure that the intelligence is uh, is available to the relevant, you know, parties so that they can uh, they can share that information and then do the best way in terms of it. Secondly, you know, uh, training. Training is very, very important. And I, I, I want to say probably, you know, with a lot of respect, the, the past military administrations did not view it necessary to provide proper training in terms of security architecture of this country. It is not just, you know, military coming to power and then you provide, you know, roads, you provide hospitals, you provide, you know, schools, and that is dividend of democracy. No, it is much more than that. Uh, I believe, you know, if the past military administration had laid a very, very formidable foundation we wouldn't have been having what we have today as insecurity. So, uh, like I said, you know, involvement of citizens, you know, in whatever we do, you know, would have actually, you know, provided, you know, a proper information and therefore foundation for uh, for security, you know, our protection in this country. If you are talking about national unity, this flag I'm holding, this is the strongest symbol, the strongest symbol of our national unity, the, the, the national flag. If you are looking at this flag, if you look at this green, white, green, you will not see your tribe. You will not see your religion. You will not even be conscious of your gender. You will not see your, your, your political affiliation. I mean, whether you are Christians or Muslims, Hausa, Zibo, Yorubas, just whatever you are, this flag reminds you that you are first and foremost a Nigerian. And so every action in our official capacity, in our individual capacity, must be based on first consideration of national interest.
what is it that whatever is good for you as an Igbo man, for me as, a, a, as wherever where I come from, whatever is good for you, at least we share humanity in common. What I want to contribute there is just an appeal. I remember during the Civil War, I was 15 years old during the Civil War. And when the war ended, I'm from South South. There's a song we use work on Jirai Kubuka one immediately after the war. I will sing it now. We salute you, General Gowan, great commander, you are welcome, welcome, welcome to our state. Grace of God, we are one, are we see one today? We fight the civil war. I witness it. Those who does not witness civil war, we don't know what we are talking about. War is not good for this country again. And those days, it's a primitive uh, primitive uh, this adapt God that what is happening there now is not the same and no country go for second war and, so, and, so, and survive it my own is just an appeal I'm appealing to Muhammad Buhari I'm appealing to Usibanjo I'm appealing to National Assembly let us keep religion aside let us keep politi politics aside and embrace peace and make sure this country move well again. I will not call my country coward because I'm, 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 we, it's my great country. No home like home. No place like home. Nigeria is our own. Anywhere you go, you must come home. Where? Nigeria. We should embrace love. We should keep religion, politics aside. We cannot look for somebody from America or any other place to. People, they will really deceive us. Instead of us to farm and do so, we buy gun, killing ourselves, allowing extra aggression, extra people to come to the country and destroying us. My appeal is that war is not good. I witnessed war, by that time I'm 15 years old. We should embrace war, should embrace peace. I wish you think we like what they have, what they did in the uh, Constitutional Conference during, the, uh, during uh, President uh, Jonathan. They can bring it, or they bring their own. They are the, people, the world are watching and laughing at us. Every world is laughing at Nigeria. We have all mineral resources to be one of the great countries. We abandon it. Using gun and chase people away. And they, all these leaders are there looking at them. It's not good. It's just an appeal. By God's grace. Also in the week, the Senate called for special interventions by the federal government for persons living with disabilities, with particular reference to the provision of assistive devices, funds and access to structures, following a motion by Senator representing Taraba Central Senatorial District Yusuf Abubakar Yusuf. Urge all ministries, departments and agencies to provide at least 10% of their projects and programs for persons with disabilities through the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities. Our men in the forefront, in the battlefield, of course, every day they are being affected. Every day many of them are being disabled. They are falling into the category of people that we are talking about. Skills acquisition in agro allied services, business development, metal fabrication, ETC, and CBN through NISAL to provide starter packs. Now worried over the absence of a specialized institution backed by law for the training of officers of the Nigerian Correctional Services, just like the Nigerian Police Academy and the Nigerian Defense College, the Senate is now considering a bill that seeks to establish the Nigerian Correctional Services Academy. The need for a technically sound manpower at various correctional centers across Nigeria re-echoed on the floor of the Senate. 
the legislators believe its significance transcends a policy pronouncement and therefore a bill to establish a Nigerian Correctional Services Academy was initiated, sponsored by Senator Ramoni Mustafa and has passed second reading. Members of the course will also analyze formulation of national strategy for the administration of our prisons. Particularly in this period where uh, correctional facilities have been threatened by those who don't mean well for this country. And that concludes this edition of Senate 109. Thanks for your time. Till next week, I'm Dennis at Divinloy. Bye for now.